Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. Give me that big hand clap as you sit down, glory. All right. Y'all right, I'm ready. Y'all ready? Hey, man, you got to get ready to keep from getting ready. Amen. My mother-in-law was always ready for a trip. She kept her shoes by the door. Amen. And if you go to her house and the shoes is gone, she ain't home because she's gone. Amen. She's on a trip. She's on another trip right now. How many of y'all going to take that big trip, that glorious trip, amen, with Jesus? I'm looking for it. Amen. But, you know, before he comes, there's conditions. Amen. Things are happening. How many of y'all know things is happening? Amen. Amen. You know, with that, uh, today's message is the condition of men. In the last day. You know, there's uh, uh, something you can look at and see the condition of what men will be like. And men, whenever you look at it and we start seeing it, we think, oh, how bad it is. We ought to think, yeah, that's true, but how good it is because Jesus is coming. Amen. I mean, y'all believe he's going to come. I believe he's going to come. Amen. Amen. Glory. And this morning, you know, I was impressed. I, 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 we went in on his son, but I want to tell you, I am impressed that, that God is still God. Can you say amen? amen? And he requires us not to look back, but look forward. It's not, it's late. That's what the Spirit of God said. It's late, but it's not too late. I say it's late, but it's not too late. Let me tell you what we need to do is push in the promises of God, what we said, and believe for what he said to us for. And let's believe God that it's not too late for your miracle. It's not too late for God to do something in your life. Can you say amen? I mean, you want God to do something in your life. Amen. You know, I thought about that. And as, as the Spirit spoke to me, I thought about that. A word came months ago and said it would be hard. And people got People don't want to hear hard. People don't want to hear difficult times. Well, the Bible speaks of difficult times in the end time. It talks about difficult. And so if it's difficult times and hard times and evil people out there, God must be strengthening his church. God must be strengthening the body of Christ. He must be getting us ready. He must be getting us ready for what lies before us. Amen. You know, people don't want to hear that. But you know, we should... Uh, Understand this, and, and when you, it, it sounds simple, but when I apply it to my life and you apply it to your life, it, it, it'll make for a difference. You know, it, the, the moral conduct of a person is actually their spiritual condition. Let me say that again. The moral condition of a person is truly their spiritual condition. You see, if you don't care, you don't care spiritually, you don't care no, any other way. If you don't believe God can do it, you don't believe life's good, come on. Very few, very few people I've met that thinks life stinks and thinks God's great. Well, let's see, it won't go in their program. Because everything's bad, everything else is bad, so there's nothing really to say about God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, you've got a people that believe that God is good and that God is still doing something. No matter what's happening out there, God is still a good God. Come on. It don't stop the blessings of God. Bad men don't stop what good God wants to do. Can you say amen? They'll do it. You know, last days, you, before the coming of Christ, you know, we've been in the last days since Jesus come now. And we do prophetically say, we'll say Joel and we'll say outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But, but we've been headed toward the last days since Jesus has came. That's, his, that's the reason he came. This, this whole reason for him coming is to come. Can you say amen? You know, the last day characterized by ungodly behavior. Have y'all seen any ungodly behavior? Amen. Now I see them pushing the new COVID thing, the new shot thing. It's amazing to me. They got the most uh, infective one coming, but nobody's hospitalized. Nobody's dying, but you better go get that shot. Now you get the jab if you want to get the jab, Pastor. I, I mean, I'll come or get arrangements to get you there if that's what you need. But I want to encourage you to hold on. Because great is our God, great is his benefits, and by his stripes we heal. So if you're healed, you must have been sick. Something must happen for you to get sick. But he said, Brother Jay, you don't understand. I do understand we can't live in fear. We can't live in the last days with ungodly behavior. We can't live in the last days with, with some kind of uh, uh, stuff going on that we don't use what we've been taught. You know, it says in the last days be false teachers. The only way you know a false teacher is you get taught up now. You got to know truth against false truth. I told you two and two was five, most of you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> now, I got grandchildren that would argue with you. <laughs> it's four, Papa. You got to take a one out. But it's, you know, and, 
And, and then we, we should see, you know, the, the condition of people in the last days can be identified by what they love. You, uh, what do you love? You know what people really, you know what people love? That's pretty much what they talk about. We're going up here. Well, I got this here. You know, I got, I got thimbles from all the way across the country. I got my mama's thimbles. What's John 3.16? I don't know. Is that in the Bible? <laughs> yep. you, know, you know, the truth is this, that we got to get to some kind of place and choose what God has said for our lives in the last day. Now, now I'm fixing to lay you down some things and people and the way they're acting, that what they are, but you and I still don't have to act that way. We don't have to be affected by those things. I've heard people say, you, you can't do this. People's crazy. You can't go nowhere. People's been crazy the whole time I've been going places. I used to go places being crazy. And I'm all right. Well, anyway. <laughs> but, you know, you tell in the last days it's going to be uh, summed up by what people love. And we're going to see that people love themselves. I mean, y'all believe we live in a self-love day. We live in a day that people, come on. Yeah. And when you get to that place and, 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 and you, the last, I mean, know that we should be able to see the love of God. That's what we really should be seeing. Yeah. And people worried about some people, but you know what gets in trouble, gets people in trouble? It's the self-life. You know what sin is, S-I-N? It's actually self <laughs> entreated nature. The self-entreated nature. It's the way I do it for me. How many of y'all know why I'm doing it for me? Some people don't know what it is to put other people first. I am thank God Jesus knew what it was. I thank God Jesus knew how to put me first. You know, if you're not careful, you get in the last day. You know, men love their self. But listen to this. Now, I don't have 20, 2020, and I don't have 2021, which is probably more. But do you know that? How many of y'all know we live in a self world? Anybody ever heard of a selfie? I can see Albert Ray taking a selfie. Come here, brother Jerry. But he'd have one about as big as this here. <laughs> I can see that. Probably I can't, but I try to see that. You know, we live in a world today that, that people uh, got to take pictures by new cars where it's theirs. Now, when I was a kid, you took pictures by a new car. But today, you took a picture by a car because you knew somebody had one. Today, people won't take one by and act like they got one. You know that 200. And 59 people died doing selfies up to 2019. 259 people. Look, I'm over the edge at the Grand Canyon. Watch me. <laughs> Step back a little further, her husband said. <laughs> now, can, can, now, think about it. Now, think about what we could tell prophets of old, tell your grandparents, tell people that, that are a generation or two back before, and tell her, said, you know it's coming, that people are going to kill themselves taking pictures? <laughs> How's that going to happen? Because they want to be seen. You know, some people, I seen a girl the other day, and she used to be in church, and she used to go on. But, you know, the other day she was ranting and talking about how nobody commented on her post, and she was cutting her friends out. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, my friends are not Facebook friends. Some of my friends are, my friends, that's what my granddaughter said, some of my friends. Some of my friends is on Facebook, but Facebook is not my friend list. I got a Holy Ghost friend list. And there's somebody in it. And, and if you don't comment, I'm going to be fine. And if you wait for me to comment, you're not going to be okay, I guess. But can you imagine that? 259 people have died taking pictures for self. And then when you talk about selfie, a selfie is for self. I didn't take it from anybody else. I'm just not into taking a picture and sending it. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said in the last days, he said, be like the day of Noah. And he, he said before that, he said they drinking and eating and making merry. And how I many of y'all know they continued in that until the flood came and took them away? Jesus said in the last days, people won't be concerned. 
There are people that will be, but there's a people, it might be unusual for people not to be concerned. You know, the reason many people just kept on carrying on, they didn't even, they were unable to see the signs of what was going on in the world. You know, you see people today, they think that's normal. You see people today think that's okay. You know, I saw a, a kindergarten class, and they had a g- tri-gender or a four-gender or eight-gender. I don't know. Gender used to be red-headed. All I know, things have changed a lot. But it was at career day at preschool or kindergarten, and it was a stripper bringing a career choice. To your kids and grandchildren, amen. Yeah. Not locally, but it's, a, it's enough that it's somewhere. And that, what am I said? What did I say? The reason the people in Noah's day didn't get up and do anything is because they didn't believe and couldn't see that it was something wrong with what was going on. It said the whole world was filled with violence. Can you imagine that? It said their only intent, their every intent was to do evil. Well, let me get Chaz and his wife over for dinner and maybe he'll start and I'll kill him before he leaves. Well, their every intent was evil. Well, when we kill him, we'll put his wife in some, something. Every intent was evil. What did it look like for the little boy to die with a horse run over? Every, every intent was evil. You live in a world today in the dark web where they'll pay people money to pour grease on a little baby, hot grease on a baby. The black web, you, you, you just out there. They'll cut people up and kill them out there. We live in a world, and people deny what we live in. Well, they just ain't that bad where I live, but honey, come into a house next to you. <laughs> and that's what reason that people get. People in, in Noah's day, they just didn't believe it happened. They didn't believe it was going. They couldn't see the signs. It, it wasn't anything to be concerned about. What we really need to do is see the signs of what's going on and not get worked up, but get worked into the Holy Spirit and say, God, whatever you're going to do, I won't do what you're doing. I know there's some stuff going on out there. I know it's some people don't have enough sense to get on the boat, but I'm going to stay on the boat. Yeah. Enough sense. Do you know it was probably in the neighborhood between 300 and 400 million people alive whenever they tried to get them on the ark and only got eight on the ark. Now think about that. But that just don't sound right. I agree to it. That don't sound right. You know, you know people just live like they wanted to and, and until, until the rain came and, and, and the flood came. And they're going to live like they want to until Jesus comes. The majority of professing Christians... Wouldn't help, it wouldn't help somebody homeless, wouldn't help somebody that, that, that they don't know, wouldn't have a heart for anything but themselves. The world and some Christians, you got to have a heart for somebody else besides yourself. Amen. you got to be tender and loving. You have to care about something besides your four no more. Amen. Yeah. Amen. My wife said, where are you going? Not too bad. I'm going back give him some money. She said, what, I'm gonna give him. She, she'll look at me sometimes. She'll... She'll do a check. I don't know if she's thinking I give him too much or not enough. She said, how much you get him? Ain't none of your business. You going to give me some? (laughs) No, I tell her exactly how much I got. (laughs) You know, I hear people say, you know, people don't have a heart for anything because we want to turn it on and off the way we want to. And they say, well, they'll just go buy drugs. Well, it's their money. Did you give them money? They're going to buy alcohol. Well, it's their money. He don't tell you how to spend yours. (laughs) What am I saying? If you walk in the spirit, God will put them in your life. God will put you through the people. Come on. God will lead you and guide you. Come on. We don't need to be like the world and cold. We don't need like to be the world, be evil. We don't need to be like the world, untouchable for humanity, that, that we can't even feel for humanity. You know, I've heard people say, you know, something happened today. I said, well, it said kind of restored my confidence in humanity. Well, tell you the truth, I have none in humanity. But I got it in Jesus and I know he'll use somebody. He'll use you. Come on. Amen. I said he'll use you if you'll let him. But we got to be careful of what things going on. In, how many of y'all believe things are going on in the world? Yes. And most of all, they're not only going on in the world. They're going on in the spirit world. Yeah. I looked at my wife. Somebody was doing something. I said, you know that. Uh, you know what that is? And she called the name of it spirit. I said, exactly. That's what it is. I'm like, don't cast it out. It's looking for a place to go. (laughs) 
it won't be like that. Now, I've seen people try to cast the devil out of everything and everybody, and I'm not against deliverance. In fact, I'm probably more for it than you are. But if somebody can't keep their deliverance, you need to watch what you're doing. You don't, you don't do surgery on somebody. Listen to me. You don't open somebody up and do surgery and get a bullet out of them and don't dress it and don't clean it up and, don't, and just send them out to a putrid world. No, you, 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 you cover them up. You put a covering on them. You put in salve. You, you, you give instruction. And you tell them, say, now you don't want to get this wet. You may have to take your bath or something and not get this wet. If you get it wet, get it real dry. And keep it clean, change the bank. I mean, y'all know that's what they tell you. And if you go around casting demons out of people and things that don't know, like you, you can make them worse and you can make them better. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that was somebody else. That was Sister Brenda's rabbit this morning. No. Hold on to that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people won't. People, you know what we do? Look at me. And I'm going, I, make, I can probably quit now. You know, if we're not real careful, we'll let life and the world cause us not to care about nothing. I'm a a firm believer that I entertain angels unaware. I'm a firm believer. I seen an angel at a house one time before I was, I told you about it. Before I was even saved and she brought tongues and I was able to understand what she said and I wasn't born again nor filled with the Spirit. Somebody said, hey, do that goodness of God. The love of God. The grace of God. The mercy of God. The call of God. The, the desire for me. If that, let me tell you, if it's demonic activity and sour things, it ought to be Angels moving. We're to see Spirit of God moving. We're to be Holy Ghost said, word fed, and get up and move towards somebody, help somebody, do whatever we need to do. Come on. You know you can make somebody else's life better by not hurting your life. Don't hurt you to do that. Thank you. It's sad. You know, it's Jesus first. You know, the last day condition, we'll see people that are only interested in themselves and not God, not the gospel. He said, Brother Jay, we're pretty good people. Yes, you are. We're trying to keep you all that way. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. The Brother Jerry said something. I'm stopping. <laughs> First Timothy 4. Finally, I'm going to give you the scripture. First Timothy 4. First verse. He said, now the spirit expressly, speaks expressly that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience scorched, sheared through with a hot iron. Now, expressly means to speak out. It speaks. It means it's plainly. God, he said, now, he wants you to know that in the last days. How many of y'all believe we're living in the last days? Amen. We're living in the last four closing up. And he said what they'll do, he said people will depart from the faith. Amen. You know people can go to church and depart from faith? He said, well, but you, I just don't believe it. Well, let me tell you what. There are people out there in the world that saved and not in church today. So would it make sense? There's some people. Oh, there we go. Come on. And, and it says seducing. It means imposters. It means misleading spirits. It means deceivers. When we hear seducing, we think sensual. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying that, that, that they'll mislead people. They'll, that they'll be imposters. Spirits mean uh, of demonic spirits. It means uh, devilish or demon. You know, oftentimes we get the word devil. We don't get the word demon in the New Testament. We, we don't get that much, especially in the King James. We don't get it at all, really. We said, well, we read it. But well, you read demon is actually translated devils. Now, you know that there are, uh, when you look up devils and demons, now listen to me, that when you look up the translation, it means disembodied personality. Now, what's the difference in a demon and a disembodied personality? Uh, one's not one and the other's not the other. That's the best thing. <laughs> but one is not a demonic spirit. The other is a disembodied. I've heard all kind of theories. I've heard they came from the flood. I've heard that they were left in the world. But you say this now. Listen to if sometimes you see people and they act out in a certain way, and you'll say they act like so and so, or they always do that. People that do so and so. No, you're seeing and identifying a spirit that's in people 
And oftentimes we don't give people a chance because we're looking at the spirit we see. We look at the condition, the wrong condition. But, you know, I, I, I'm going to be like Kenny Rogers. I just dropped in to see what condition your condition was in this morning. <laughs> Somebody's going, did Kenny sing that? Yes, he did. <laughs> Speaking lies, it means, you know what that means? Errors in doctrine. And you can't tell if a doctrine's wrong except you know what's right in a doctrine. He said, oh, they say so much stuff over. Well, when you get it, we'll quit it. <laughs> I said, when you get it, we'll quit it. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, having their conscience, their moral, you know, it actually means that, that, that it's so out of whack like drugs. Right? It's so much that, that they're not even in control of their faculties. In the last days, we'll see a, a full-blown generation, a generation of me love. Now we got people love cake. We got people that loves the shoes. We got people that loves the house robe. We got people that stays home. We got people that come on. Yeah. You know the, the love I'm talking about is agape love. I'm talking about that dying, giving love. I'm talking about that love that'll love you no matter what you look like. I'm talking about that love that'll love you no matter what you smell like. I'm talking about that love look at no matter what your race is. Can somebody say amen? amen. But you know we it, Second Timothy. Let me hit Second Timothy. Y'all give me a few more minutes. Second Timothy. You know, it's sad, but, but people sometimes just don't care. Amen. Second uh, Timothy 3 and 1. He said, know this also, that in the last day, perilous times will come. Does that sound like the church is going to take over the world? No, it does not. It says perilous times come. He's talking about, but he said, it, he's trying to uh, jolt us. He said, now in the last time, you live in times that are not good and, and they're chaotic and they're bad. You're living in a bad time. But who knows, we can live in the victory in Christ no matter what's going on out there. So he's telling me that's out there, but that shouldn't be going on in here. <laughs> They'll come. Last days. You know, last days, this is a, is a, strange, is a strange word in the Greek. It's one of the only places this, Greek, this word is used. It means the furthest point. It means you can't go any further. It's like going to Grand Isle and you can't go any further. It's like going to Holly Beach and you can't go any further. Now, if you go in the water, but your truck's made to run on the, uh, on the blacktop, so you probably can't go any further. And this is what this word means. It's not saying that it's not a time in the, in the last time that it's nothing before, but it's as far as we can go, as far as humans can go, as far as people can go in this state. He's going to come back. So when you see these people, don't get upset. Rejoice and know that, you, that your uh, uh, redemption draws nigh. But believe that if that's going on out there, it's okay because I'm going on good in here with him. Can somebody say amen? amen. Amplified says this. He said, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that it will be hard to bear. Then we get a prophetic word. That says that, the, that, that things is going to come around and God's going to walk. Well, it's going to be a little hard. People shut down. They don't want to hear that. He's a bad prophet. He said we're going to go through stuff. Right. He's a good, good father. What he is. He never tells us this stuff to scare us. He tells us this stuff to prepare us. He tells us this stuff to get us ready. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. And, and, and the confidence of what's going on. We need not be like them. We need to be like him. We need to have a heart for, come on. Give God glory. Amen. Two sets for men shall be lovers of them own selves. Yeah. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents who would ever thought. Yeah. <laughs> Unthankful and unholy. Selves means lovers of their own self. In the, uh, the, what place? They want the first place. Can somebody say amen? You know, actually, when you look at this word in the Greek, it actually means self-kissing. It means to kiss yourself. You ever seen anybody go, love me? <laughs> How absurd that is. But you know what the Scriptures does? The Scriptures takes that very description and tells you that's what people are going to be about. Yeah. I love me. I deserve that. I'm first. I'm special. I worked all week so I can spend my money like I want to. No, you better pay your bills. Don't you bet? 
Why do you think they get behind people spending on themselves? Why you, why, how is it? Do you see those people? Look at me. You know those people? They make plenty of money and they're broke all the time. Why is that? Because they spend it on self-love. Side by sides. Front side, left side. Some things they can't afford. I guess I could close up there, but I'm not. <laughs> Love their self. Now, I think, I, listen to me, I'm going to take care of Jerry now. And I'm going to get Jerry out of the rain. I'm going to get Jerry out of the heat. Now, I'm just telling you, if y'all going to sit in the sun and talk, I'm going to back up in the shade if I can. I'm going to take care of Jerry. Now, I'm going to do that. <laughs> but it's, it's not to be all about me. Come on. You know, instead of seeking after heavenly riches, riches, they seek that the majority of the people in the world and a lot of the church will seek after material riches, riches of the world and what the world has. And look around what the world has and think you're behind because you don't have... Listen, children, that's not what holds us. We're going to leave here and Jesus is going to come and we're not taking nothing but souls with us. We're not taking anything but the Word of God with us. And the last days covet us. Lovers of themselves. Right. If, if it don't benefit me, I don't do it. You better be careful. Right. I'm not going to sow into that. I'm not going to give finances into that. That's just for them. You better do like, you better be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, if you're saying that, that's you saying that. If God said that, you better not move a dime into it if God says it's wrong. But what are you saying, Brother Jerry? I'm telling you that we get hooked up with ourselves. We become suspicious of other things. And we can't minister to people. We can't stop and take our time and talk to people because we're afraid something's going to happen. Look, we need to loose angels. We need to loose your, the Word of God. Get them in the store and talk to them. Get them over next to the counter and talk to them. Man, I tell you, I, you know you don't have to be uh, real smart to, to be real smart. You know how I ask people if they're saved and talk about being saved? They don't even know that's what happened. But if they're not, they know it happened. I asked that girl, I told her, I said, how's your day this morning? I asked her, I was at the donut palace, show. I was up there getting them donuts. China man was up and ready to go, amen. But they didn't have my little kakashi, so anyway. So that girl standing, I said, you having a good day? She said, yeah. She said, I'm having a good day. She said, well, about good as be expected. I said, oh, yeah. I said, well, I'm expecting a pretty good thing or something like that. You know me? You know, I'm, I'm ready to go. So she's starting. She's talking back. I got a live one. <laughs> she's talking back. And I said, uh, I said, yeah. Then she, I looked. I said, yeah. She said, well, she said, at least I'm on this side. of the. Uh, I'm, at least she said, she said, at least I'm not uh, underground or under bottom or something about being buried or something. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, that's a good thing. I said, but you know, I said, that's a good trip if you're ready for it. But if you're not ready for it, it's a bad trip. She turned and she looked at me. She said, what trip? Oh, got me a live one. Got me a live one. <laughs> she said, what trip? I said, that eternal trip. Heaven or hell? And she said, oh, she said, I got that fixed. She said, me and the Lord, we got that fixed. He said, no problem. She said, you know what I tell my friends? And then when she said this, a kind of light went off, and I'm thinking, maybe God sent her to me. <laughs> but she said, you know what I tell my friends? I said, no, ma'am, will you tell your friends? She said, I tell my friends that some, this on earth is the only hell some people are going to see because they're going to heaven. Wow. And he said, this is the only heaven some people are going to see because they're not going to heaven. I said, oh, got me sermon. Bye. See you later. <laughs> so she made a wonderful statement. Now think about what she gave us. Think about, I, you said, that's a girl. To, I believe the Holy Spirit told me. That's why you don't hear him sometimes. Because you think he ought to come some other way. I mean, he comes other ways too. Them little audible voices inside, they kind of scare me sometimes, sir. But think about how, how, how good of a tool is that. Think about that. Think about how that you can tell them. said, you know, this is the only heaven some people are going to get. But I'm going to get the real heaven. Yeah. Right. Some people are not going to repent. And this is most heaven. That, you can work with that. Non-offensive. You ain't called nobody saved. You ain't called nobody lost. But everybody you talk to knows if they saved or if they lost. Most of them. It's no way a person really can't know that they're not saved. said, well, you know, I didn't know you could get saved. <laughs> well, then, we're ignorance is bliss. 
But you know that, that, that Satan being the, the, the grand master, he, he wants to avert people's attention. He wants to cause them to believe that the world is given better than what you're getting in the kingdom. I messed somebody up the other day. They even come back, Sister Wanda, and check what I said to them. You know I must have messed them up. He said, Miller, that's what he called me. He said, Miller, he said, what do you think? He said, I serve the Lord, said, and I tithe, and I give stuff, and all that. He said, I'm about to believe that this stuff is just a cam and not working our way. He said, don't seem like I get nothing out of it. I looked at him, I said, well, if it ain't working, not working I'd be you. I'd quit and go back. He asked this one, Do you, what kind of answer was that? He told me just to go back. Let me tell you what, if it ain't working and, and, and you're in it for the wrong thing, it'll never work for you. If you're in for something other than the salvation, if you're in it for something other than Jesus being Lord, if you're just doing it for fire insurance, you're in trouble. If you're just doing it just in case hell is real, you in trouble. If you're doing it just because my mama did, you in trouble. Left my notes. I'm back. You know, boasters. You know what that is? That's a bragger. You ever seen somebody brag? Man, I can drink. I can drink four beers. Don't bother me. <laughs> Some people can brag. But you know what? What braggers do? Braggers take all the attention off God. All the attention off the Spirit. Takes all the. Y'all listen to me. They take it all off that. They boast of themselves and they got it and they stress it to the fact of who they are to impress others. Me, 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 my way, myself. Let me tell you what. If somebody's selling themselves, they're not worth the price. Proud. You know what that means? It means to, to be haughty. It means to be others. You know, pride. Is, it, it, how many of y'all know the fall of Satan was pride? In the last days, be pride. When I was a kid, I said, you got to have a little pride. So I thought you were supposed to have pride. I thought I was supposed to have ta town pride. I thought I had rib bone pride. I thought I'd have pipeline pride. I thought I'd have them prides and come find out when I needed the pride bunch, they weren't there for me. But Jesus was, amen. amen. I used to be in the union, you know, and I'd be in the union and, and voting like they tell you how to vote, you know, always, always vote Democrat, whatever it was. And, and they did, me, when after I got my neck broke, they didn't get me a can of beans. My life shut down, my, my destitute, brother. And one of them come to the house, tried to tell me how to vote. Opened the door up, this he did. I said, you know, I've been uh, all this time. I said, y'all never bought me a can of beans. Y'all don't tell me how to vote. Hey, isn't that crazy that the world system is in what other people do and people think that's more important. And these same people that got on that Biden train are the same people that's calling, asking us to pray to get the ear of, of Biden so he had opened up their pipelines again. No, y'all voted against them. I didn't know y'all got political. You see, what the enemy wants to do is cause chaos in this day. People ask me, I don't know what's going on. I said, that don't make any sense. It's not supposed to make sense. It's all designed to fail. Every bit of it is designed to fail. The government's going to fail. People's going to fail. All, all financial institutions are going to fail. The whole system's going to fall. So, Brother Jerry, you don't believe it. Well, go ahead. They're going to be looking for an answer. They're going to be looking for, they'll accept the chip, check the number. They'll, they'll be looking for something. We're going to be looking for the Messiah. We're going to be looking for Jesus. We're going to look on, hold on to the coming of Jesus. We know because men are out of, out of whack. We know lives are out of whack. We know things. How many of you know it's seducing spirits? It's seducing spirits. We just read in, in 1 Timothy. And you know what they do? They tell, seducing things tell you you don't have to do what you need to do in the Lord. The Lord understands you're just a human. You don't have to, you don't have to repent. That's a lying spirit. Yeah. Now you said, well, you know, God died back here and he, he died for everything. So every sin I commit, will commit, and shall commit God's word. But that, that, don't play stupid. Yeah. Be responsible. Right. You know, it, you know, just, just the, the old me, the old look at me. That's, that's what we have, boasters and proud. And, and they think that, you know, the old me, 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 you know, blasphemers. You know, blasphemers in the last days, they'll speak, they'll speak horrible about God. They'll contribute things to God. I heard a guy tell me, he said, that, when, when, wasn't this something awful to say? He went up, had Katrina, Katrina and had the, uh, the hurricane and it went in and, and this guy said, well, God just flushed the commode down there. I said, what awful thing to say. I said, it's some good Christian people's churches and homes that lost and have nothing to do with your opinion. 
You can't lump people together because, come on. Well, I'm sure some of the people living like the devil. I'm sure some of those. Come on now. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, it said blasphemers in the last. That's somebody to speak injurious. It, well, how many of y'all know I want things that, 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 that speak for good? Disobedient. How many of you know that if kids don't want to be obedient, I mean, who's going to be in control of them later? Can somebody say amen? And, you know, if you go back 40 or 50 years, you will find that children had more respect for adults than they have today. We live in a world full of children that are lost or were raised with lost parents that you know that, that, that at some point, somebody's going to have to grow up. You know, not only uh, many children have little respect, but parents have little respect for other people. We live in a day that don't have any respect. I held the door and I had it and I just held the door up. And that young man just walked by me like that. I said, you're welcome. Sometimes I want to take and grab them by the arm and put them back outside the door. <laughs> Shut that door. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you? I mean, I wanted to, so I'm going to go ahead and try and do it on the way home. <laughs> but you know that the right thing is to be humble. Yeah. He didn't hire me to open his door. He didn't ask me to open his door. Why I need to take offense? That he didn't say thank you to the opening of my door. Right. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy the way people think? Because we do something, now we think they owe us something. Yeah. Oh, that's right. What are we going on? Amen. That's, I don't even have to write that down. I can remember that. Amen. You know, I'll tell Sister Wonder, I said, uh, Mama, write that down. And one of them little kids asked me, he said, where's your mama? <laughs> he, uh, Lucas, come up to Sister Wonder. He said, she looked at him and said, what, baby? He said, where's your kid? <laughs> talking about Amaya he said where's your kid they paying attention more than you think they are they're listening to that other stuff he said in the last days people will be unthankful I see unthankfulness everywhere I go yeah. don't think that they don't think they got they don't think they were done right don't think that they that, that, come on everybody everybody you know when people are unthankful when they think they've been slighted or they don't get what they want or pure, pure ignorant I mean come on so he says, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incompetent, fierce, and despisers of those that are good. You know, natural affection, he said, that they leave natural affection. I don't understand some of those things. I love my kids, my grandkids. I can't understand how people walk away from children, or it is men, women, grandparents. Grandparents walk away from them, too. I seen one that six kids went into, went into foster care because the parent, grandparents wouldn't take them. <coughs> You know, that sounds bad, but you don't, we don't know their history. We don't know what's going on with them. What I'm telling you is that the kids, are, you, kids are good to have parents, you, you, to be a parent, you know. You have your kids today. We need to take them and point them in the correct direction. We need to, to teach them what the Word of God says. They're going to be responsible for themselves. We're going to do the best that we can. And we're going to point them to Jesus. Come on. And it's up to them. Come on. I said it's up to them. And, and when you do that, it'll do that. You know, the Word of God says that truth breakers. You know, that means people will break spiritually, physically, mentally. Financially. We have more vows broken in marriage than any time in history. Come on. Incontinence. I know that sounds like something I need to do. Go, I need to go on to the restroom, but that ain't what it's talking about. <laughs> Somebody say, Inco did he say incontinence? Well, I'm just reading, I'm just reading the King James. You know what it means? Look at me. Let me say it to you in country. It means to be without self-control, spiritually, physically, mentally, or financially. You know, we have people that are not in control. They have no, they have no control of their finances. I've seen kids have a car note and buy a $200 pair of tinnies. What you going to do about your car note? Well, I, I ain't got it. What, 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 uh, I thought you had $300. Well, I got $100. I spent $200 on a pair of shoes. Just like the pair I got. <laughs> Truth breakers, talk about false accusers. You know, how many of y'all know a lot of people accuse God of doing things he don't do? And the devil gets accused of a lot of things, and I'm not taking up for him, but. <laughs> you know, like the devil, he's sitting out on the steps of the church, the first church of the frozen dozen, the popsicle gang, and he's sitting out on the steps and he's crying. 
The little boy asked him why he's crying. He's wiping them tears with his tail like that. He's crying. He said, why are you crying? He said, them people's in there accusing me of things I ain't never done. <laughs> Hurting the devil's feelings. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't do everything. We're in control of more than we want to believe. I said we're in control more than we won't believe until we get to that place that we won't say we're in control of it. That now, now we're good. We, we good. Amen. See, but in the end days, you know what they'll want to do? They'll, that they'll want to go away from God. They want to take everything away from God. They, want, they won't want you to serve. They don't want your kids to serve. They don't want you to have peace. Come on. The world doesn't want you to have that. The world wants to have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. I'm telling you, we serve a supernatural God. He's going to return. We serve the God that knows he's still in control. Maybe some hard things ahead, but God is still going to be in charge of my life and yours if you let him. Amen. You know, sometimes people don't want to let him be in charge. I know a guy that possibly went on to hell, but he was pretty smart. So I'm thinking like in the dark, he made a decision and turned around. He said, I would like to serve the Lord. He said, but he's going to be boss and I just got to be boss. Now that ain't something you hear. That's not a post. That's a end to my ear. And I said, well, I said, he do a pretty good job with me. I found out the more I let him do is good for me. I found out the more I can trust him with, I don't have to worry about. The more, more I let him have, more I don't have. The more things I can't do nothing about. How I many you know that? You can't do nothing about it. Let him do something about it. All right. Won't you stand with me this morning and know that, that, that God is not telling us that the last days would be hard for us to be frightened or anything. He wants us to be prepared. How I many you want to be prepared? Amen. And, and, and quit. You know what people say? They'll talk, oh, the world's so bad you can't go out there. Yeah, the world's so bad you can't go out there, but you got to get out there anyway. Yeah. Right. Don't let ungodliness keep you in your house. Don't let ungodliness, come on. Yeah. And you know what the most important thing is? The most important thing is that the church needs to train each other in love. We need to say it to each other. I've had people I told, I love them for years. I didn't get told for a long time. But you still can say it. You know, if I tell this young man I love you, it has the same effect that I love you as if he said it back, understood it, knew me a thousand years. See, for God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believed upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that amazing? And that same speaking to and love, it, that's what got us here. Well, they don't act like they want to be loved. What well, a big deal. You know what we got to do? We got, we got to be a, pe a people that go away from covetousness. Go away from boasting. Go away from building self. And lift Jesus up. For that song is so true. Only he is worthy. You can, you can, you, you, you'll get to the end of your road. And you'll find out that he's important. You'll, you, you can spend a lot of days and times trying to work it out, figure it out, do it yourself. But you're going to find out that he's better. Can you say amen? Right. Instead of being a, a, a people of covetous, we need to be a people that give. Instead of being boasters, we need to be humble. Instead of being people that blaspheme, we need to be speakers of truth. Instead of being without natural affection, we need to make ourselves stand up and say, God, fix the affection in me. We need to get to the place that we're not just lovers of pleasure, but we're lovers of God. Yeah. You know, when we get to that place, you say, Lord, I, I need you to work on these things. There's some stuff going on out there. You know, and, and it's okay for us, the church, to look out and say, that's happening there. That, there's boasters out there. There's, there, there's thieves. There's murders. There, all those things. Out. But you know what the most important thing of all this is not allow these things in here. Not allow those things out there in here, in here, in this body, in this. Come on. Yeah. Let, not let that stuff out there seek its way in here. I don't think you understood what I'm saying. You see, if you're not careful, I used to think it was a lie, but it turned out to be the truth. If you're not careful, you'll become what you hate, you'll become what you dislike. 
you're not real careful. Because of that turning against that, that what you have, and instead of surrendering it to God, you got to be over. Don't be over. That stuff will fall on you and rub on you and get on you. Amen. We need to surrender to Him and say, Father, my condition in the last day, I want it to be a holy day. I want it to be, excuse me, a, a holiness in my life. I want what rightness of your word in my life. I don't want to be like the world, I want to be like you. How many of you believe that, that we are living in the last day? How many of you believe Jesus is going to come? You know, I don't know what lies before us, but no matter what it is, He will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never, come on, He will not leave us like He found us. Amen. And we just love Him, appreciate Him, Lord. We, we know it's bad out there, but it's good in here. We're going to go forward and do great things for God. How many of you want to do that? Amen. The last day, that, that may be their condition. And listen to me, my spiritual condition is my moral condition today. You know, you take a whole lot of preaching and look at that, but just sit down and figure out where I'm at. Help me more than anybody. Amen. Are y'all ready to push forward? Y'all ready to, to, to let the kingdom shine, let his word come forth, let, let, let our enemies be defeated, and let God arise, let what he wants in our lives. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We proclaim the goodness of God. And, Father God, you alone are worthy. You by yourself, Father God. That, that if everything went away today, Father God, you would still be the only pre-existing, only existing God, Father, that could even save us or help us today. Father God, we depend upon your word, Father God. We don't be like last day people. We won't be like last day believers. We won't be like movers and shakers, Father God, for you. And we just... Ask, Father God, you lead us and guide us into testimony and witnessing to people that you will touch us, Father God, that we'll be able to touch others. And today, Lord, Lord God, we just ask your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness where we failed you. And we choose to go forward, Father God, in these days of exciting, exciting days to believe that you shall return. And we look forward to being that generation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Give him a big hand clap of praise if you would. Amen. Anything else? All right. Tell somebody you love them and hug two necks.